Okay, uh, the president met with IMF Managing Director Christine Lagarde this afternoon. The uh, meeting took about 40 minutes. Uh, it was basically a courtesy call. They exchanged pleasantries. Um, Ms. Lagarde informed the president that the IMF had upgraded the growth projections for the Philippines. I think, Jen, you asked about that. She, she reported that. They said that based on their analysis, things were looking very positive for the Philippines and that they were confident that, uh, that uh, the growth targets could be attained given the momentum that we've had. The president also talked to her about some of the things that uh, we've done to bring about the growth, um, thrifty spending on um, government, of government expenditures, the, the uh, um, leveling of the playing field to encourage more uh, investments to come in. Uh, but Ms. Lagarde was well aware of all of these things because part of what went into the increase in the projections was a thorough study of, of our economic uh, potential. So um, it was basically that. The president remarked, though, that um, Ms. Lagarde has a tough job because it is her job to convince world leaders to make difficult choices. So uh, he commended her for being able to do that in such a such a effective way, and that's that's basically it. There was, uh, it was and it was a, basically an exchange of pleasantries. So, ano yung projection target na sinet sa atin for let's say 2013? Ay nandito yan. Yung figures, the stats. Six percent. Six percent ang inexpected ng growth sa atin this year. Year. From about 4.8 percent, so in upgrade nila. Ne, the original projection for 2013 was 4.8. Kinawa nilang six, because they expect growth. They they expect growth to be faster than they initially expected. Six percent. Yeah. But sir, for next year they projected a slower pace. Did she explain why? No, she didn't really explain too much why. But in general, uh, that's because there's a lot of uncertainty in, in some uncertainty in the global economy remains. No? Um, but given how things are moving very quickly and how volatile sometimes uh, economic developments are, it's really difficult to make a projection beyond the current year. So I'm sure that um, those projections will be revisited as, as developments happen. <coughs> Doris? Was, was there a specific uh, request from the president na which countries in particular to convey yung request niya din kay ano, Lagarde to really invest in the Philippines? Wala naman siyang request kay Lagarde to World invest in the The IMF is not uh, investing. Oh. They're, they're basically a uh, <coughs> lending institution. No? So there was no request for the IMF to invest in the Philippines. No, no, I mean uh, world leaders because she can convince world leaders. No, world well, leaders, so. malang ganon. Well, actually, we already knew about it, so it wasn't a surprise. He thanked her, and uh, he thanked her for for the confidence that they expressed in in the Philippines. Is the the finance team confident that we can do it? Well, Simply. we have our own projections, Danny. You know, and uh, that's about for this year. It's about what six six. six to seven percent, so it's it's more or less in line with we our own target. with our own projections. So um, we've said we can we think we can reach those targets. So, um, can you tell us something about the Philippines and the partners partnering? Yeah, let me just explain. Our partnering against corruption initiative is a group of private companies. Uh, and governments who have come together to encourage both governments and corporations to work to prevent corruption. Uh, corruption creates an unlevel playing field. It makes an economy and a business uncompetitive. So the idea is if you, if you minimize corruption, then, then you create more efficient businesses and more efficient economy. It's just kind of a complicated way of saying if you eliminate corruption, you can also eliminate poverty, which is why the president began by saying 
um, that that when he ran for president, his slogan was "Kung walang korap, walang mahirap." If you if you eliminate corruption, you will eliminate poverty because many of the things that prevent an economy from taking off and prevent a government from being able to do the right things is corruption. And so the theme of his uh, campaign, which he explained in his speech, fit very well with the uh, with the goals of the Partnering Against Corruption Initiative. They call it Pachi. is what mm -hmm. they call it. No, aside from President Aquino. Um, the president of Mongolia was there. They have also been uh, making strides against corruption and they've been growing at a very rapid pace. Um, there was a member of parliament from India. There was the prime minister of Peru. And there was someone from Transparency International. I will list down the, the personal details of these people a little later on. But they all talked about uh, the need to fight corruption in order to create more efficient economies. And uh, the president was the first asked to speak. They actually changed the order of the speakers because of the president. They, they decided to ask him to speak first. And after that was the president of Mongolia. Um, the, the reception, I think, was very good. There were a lot of uh, private sector people there, corporations from different, um, in different fields. There were some uh, BPO companies. There were some uh, uh, services companies and all of them. Uh, spent a lot of time uh, chatting with President Aquino, having his uh, having their pictures taken with him. So I think the reception to our president was very good, and I think people understand uh, that the Philippines is really taking serious steps to reform its economy, and I think they were very appreciative of that. The crowd kept. You know, people were walking in and out. I would say that maybe um, at any point between maybe 50 and 100. Probably closer to 50. But these were high-level uh, corporate people. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I saw a few, uh, I saw two people who actually owned large companies who were there. Then there was um, some CEOs, CFOs. There was a, there was, well, uh, Jaime and Fernando Zobel were there. Um, there was also someone, a young WEF, uh, young leader. Uh, no, Sheila. Sheila Marcelo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but most of the crowd was really mixed, no? I mean, you had, of course, you had a mixed bag of speakers you had someone from Latin America you had two from Asia one from India so you had a very mixed crowd more or less with Kia more or less uh, people kept going in and out so I guess you could say uh, on the average maybe about 50 people well, how many minutes was the speech of the yeah. president the president took maybe about took maybe about five to seven minutes for his remarks <laughs> I think they wanted some of the leaders to speak shortly about their experiences. And um, there is, there, the, those discussions will probably be synthesized at a later point by the Pachi secretary who was there. No? But there was no discussion about, okay, as a result of this, this is what's going to happen. So it was really more of a conversation than anything else. More of a awareness, which particular country is doing for yeah, yeah. The the countries that were there highlighted what they were doing. So there were people taking notes. Approach, yes, exactly. Yeah. So which yeah. which one could be affected? Yeah. That would be in the speech tomorrow, but it had to do with um, the way that we spend government money. So the more prudent way that we decide what what projects get the money. Uh, the way we try to create more efficiencies in terms of spending government funds. Um, 
yeah, so it's mostly fiscal, fiscally related reforms. There were certain things that he explained also, some of the actions that we took to fight uh, high level, high profile corruption were touched upon, such as the impeachment processes and things like that were, were touched upon, just to give examples of some of the things that we were doing to reform, not just the fiscal picture, but also the, the political landscape as well. No, there were there were uh, people giving short speeches, and then after that, there was a little bit of um, Q &A. not Q and A, but people were it was mingling. People were mingling. Uh, it was kind of almost like a networking session. A lot of people um, came up to the president to talk to him about what what we were doing. Uh, he was in conversation with at least two CEOs that I saw. Um, and these are. These were from the United States, uh, based on the way that they were speaking. I think they were, they were Americans. They approached the president. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hmm? the president oh, they were just making small talk. Oh, we, we like what you're doing to the country. It's creating confidence in your country. Well, I don't know. Apart from the Philippines, there are other countries that have shown a really strong fight against corruption. Well, the Mongolians, I think, Mongolia, have, have yes. caught some global attention caught also. Attention, because they're, they're making very strong statements against corruption as well. Um, their economy is also growing quite rapidly. Um, so, uh, and, and, um, so, so they were also being recognized as well. Philippines, Mongolia, other countries. Now. Peru, uh, India, uh, yeah. strong campaign against Well, these are countries that share their experiences, what they're doing about it uh, in their own countries. Remember the different contexts, you yeah, know. I mean, Mongolia is very different from the Philippines, mm -hmm. and it's very. There, there are also differences between us and Peru and India. But in what, what brought everybody together was that you had governments that were taking concrete steps and they were willing to share what they, what they learned with the, corporate, with the corporations. I think this is good because when, when the CEOs hear from the leaders, I'm not just President Aquino, no, but the, the President of Mongolia, when they hear straight from the leaders about what they're doing to fight corruption, I think it helps instill confidence in them because every one of those people was a potential investor in in our country and so when you explain all these things to them they they sometimes act a little surprised because some of the moves that we've taken are quite bold no um so so i think it creates a good impression of of uh not just the leadership but the country in general was there mention of the prosecution of the farmer he mentioned in passing that, that, that there were uh, processes against members of the previous regime. Impeachment of Corona. Yeah, that was mentioned. Just as an example of some of the reforms. While well, the president was listening to the cases of Mongolia, India, were there, uh, uh, was he convinced that some of those lessons could be applicable to us. I didn't uh, ask him about that. We didn't have a discussion about... Was he's an apparent very receptive child, listening to <coughs> the other experiences. Yes, uh, in, mm. but you know, in the case of the president of Mongolia, mm. magkakilala na sila eh. Mm. So I think they've shared their experiences in the past. The president of Mongolia brought along a book, a mm. uh, parang coffee table book, and uh, when he saw President Aquino, he pinakuha niya sa aid niya yung isa. Mm. May, may, may sinulat siya, pinirmahan niya, he gave it to the president as a gift. Mm. So, uh, magkakilala na sila eh. So, even, even then... It's way of validating lang ulit. No? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, and we saw them, we said, oh, my friend. So, they were very friendly with each other, very casual. You know naman the president, he's a, he's a very... Mongolian president ito? Yeah, the Mongolian president. So, our president naman is a very uh, down-to-earth guy. So, he went up to the guy, said hello. His name is... I hope I can pronounce this correctly. Chakhyagin Elbegord. 
Uh, well, I'm, I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. So I will type it out and send it to you. No, no. It wasn't a long speech. Right? It was just a very short overview of what we've done. So he gave an example of uh, fiscal reform. He gave an example of political reform. Then he said, this is all working to create a, a more inclusive and efficient economy. That's the gist of it. I will release the actual text tomorrow. I'll give it to you tomorrow. No, no, it's just, no, no, there was no, nothing of that sort. It was just really a courtesy call. She, she informed us of the increase. She said it was a good time, she said, it was a good time for the Philippines to come to Davos so that we could call um, attention to the things that we're doing and the way that our economy is growing. See the guard mismo nang sabi nun. Yes. But only a bit. Yes. But it's still better than last year. So you she mentioned that. Yeah, you said yesterday that Eva got to pick her brains on on this global. Yeah. So, so we didn't have too much time to do that because mm -hmm. the, because of the traffic, she arrived a little bit late, mm -hmm. and so we didn't have much time. But she did say that you know in general. They're a little cautious about the global economy, uh, which is why, as you said, Doris, it's, it's sort of tempered as far as the global economy is concerned. But then she was quick to point out that there were certain areas where certain economies that were proving to be the exception, and we were one of them. So they've actually upgraded their estimate for us. pick up. Maybe we can just pretend that that's sort of your producers <laughs> being creative. Oh, oh. Para, parang ano yan, to set the mood that we're in Davos. Where's the local energy? Is the president getting updates on the issues at the moment? Yes, yeah. Did the report get reached? I know that he, was, he has been updated on that, on that incident. Uh, he's been current on that. Um, I don't know specifically what updates he got this afternoon, but um, he was with Secretary Almendras during the afternoon, um, and, and I think they were talking about uh, some of the issues um, in Manila. The rest of us, just so you know, the rest of us, uh, Secretaries Abad, Purisima, Domingo, Palisakan, and myself, uh, attended some of the sessions in WEF. Um, we listened to Angela Merkel talk about what she expects to happen in the European economy. We listened to a session on um, sustaining growth, inclusive growth, uh, the, the kind of things that, that we thought we could pick up from people. I don't know if this will be interesting, but one of the things that came out from the inclusive growth uh, discussions was the importance of investing in education. And you know that that struck a chord with us because we're really trying to spend money on education. Our our constitution requires us to allocate the largest amount, no? And uh, we've we've done that, and we continue to to do even more than the minimum requirement, no? So at least you hear, tama ba itong ginagawa natin? We're trying to say we're fighting for inclusive for, uh, inclusive growth. Tama ba yung ginagawa natin? And you sit around in a table, and there are people from from. Um, Denmark and, and Sweden and Japan and they're all talking about education. So parang you, you get the sense na well, tama naman yung ginagawa natin. No? It may not happen overnight pero the general directions that we're, we're looking for or that we're heading for seem validated by much of the discussion that went on. Uh, that struck us. Eh? In spending on education is probably, they said, one of the best things you can do. Uh, to to promote inclusive growth. 